What's up, you guys, and welcome back to the Televised Podcast. My name is Anna, and today we're going to be talking about Batwoman Season 2, Episode 15, titled Armed and Dangerous. Um, long time no see. Uh, Batwoman was on a three-week break, so I also took a three-week break. Uh, <laughs> I last week I was going to record something, but I actually lost my voice and it's still a bit it's a bit suspect, so we'll see. But you know, just kinda uh, bear with me with that. Um but yeah, so I sorry I haven't been around, but uh just you know but we're going to talk about Batwoman today. I really enjoyed this episode. Obviously, the last episode, episode fourteen, ended with that huge cliffhanger and then for that three week break was torturous obviously to find out you know what was going to happen to Luke and and what the whatever how everyone would handle exactly what was happening and and everything so i was really excited to finally have the show back because that was just mean to <laughs> to leave, to leave on that cliffhanger you know um But I guess, oh, oh, really quick though, before I get into talking about Batwoman, I do want to mention that um, as of yesterday, when you're listening to this, as of yesterday, the comic DC Pride number one will be out and it will feature the first ever appearance of Dreamer in a comic book written by Nicole Maines. It's really, really, really awesome. I, if you live anywhere near a local comic book shop, please go in, please pick it up. There's multiple covers, multiple variants. There's one of my favorite ones is a Harley and Ivy cover drawn by Jen Bartel, who's one of my favorite comic book artists, probably, you know, maybe ever and also just active right now. I love her. Um, and the story, just like supporting the comic and and showing people that there is showing DC that there is a demand for these kinds of stories, for stories of LGBTQ superheroes. Specifically, also, you know, just for Dreamer. I mean, if you're a Batwoman fan, there's a Kate Kane story in there with Batwoman. Um, and just go pick it up if if you're around. I mean, go support your local comic book shop. But also, if, if you can't, there's... Uh, uh, Comicsology, which you can uh, buy digitally, or you could go on DC Universe and buy it digitally there. So there's lots of ways to support this comic. I hope that you do. Please don't pirate it because it's you know we need to show show up and show DC that this is the kind of content that we're looking for, um, especially like I said in regards to Dreamer. Also, another comic that will be out by the time this is out came out ye- uh, yesterday when you're listening to this uh, is Camera. Johnson's writing debut for a Batman comic. He wrote a Luke Fox story um, in Batman Urban Legends number four. It'll be out the same day that DC Pride number one is out. So while you're at the comic shop trying to get DC Pride number one, go pick up Urban Le- uh, Batman Urban Legends number four. It's got a Luke Fox story written by the guy who plays Luke Fox. It's pretty damn cool. Go support both Nicole, who wrote the Dreamer story, and Camerus, who wrote the Luke story. Obviously, such, uh, just so cool. It's so cool to see the Arrowverse, um, actors getting, sorry, my voice is just so bad. The Arrowverse actors getting involved in the, uh, like, comic book world and the writing world and getting so involved in, uh, their characters and it's just so cool because obviously I mean Dreamer and Luke like those characters are the future at least it feels like to me the future of the Arrowverse and the future of DC Comics and I just love that that Cameras and Nicole are, are able to like get into um furthering their characters legacies I mean for Nicole to write the first ever comic book story of Dreamer. That is so cool. And for Cameras, who plays Luke Fox, to be able to tell his own Luke Fox story is insane. And I mean, I feel the same way about Ozzy, how she's right, you know, she wrote Kelly's episode. She's the first Arrowverse actor to take her foray into writing. And then obviously all of the Arrowverse actors who've gotten to direct as well is just wonderful. But 
I don't know. It's just really cool. And like I said, if you live near a comic book shop, please go in and support them. And actually, a lot of comics, if you if they're not open quite yet or you don't feel comfortable going there, a lot of comic book shops have online purchasing uh, like websites that you can use that would come directly from them. They would pick them off their shelves and ship them to your house. Or you could just go pick them up if you don't want to wander around the comic book shop. But it's really important that we support our local comic book shops because uh, most of them are just like, you know, mom and pop comic book shops and you need to support them. And, you know... What better way than by buying DC Pride number one and Batman Urban Legends number four? Go check them out. That's enough about that. Um, (laughs) So, uh, 215. We're talking about 215. Episode picks up exactly where we left off with Luke getting shot um, and him being taken by paramedics at the scene to the hospital. We then cut to an interrogation where Tavaroff uh, is being interrogated by Jacob and a bunch of other people who I assume are like board members at uh, at the Crows. It was it wasn't ever like fully explained who these people are, but they're in the investig in interrogation room with Tavaroff and he tells the story of you know what happened and he totally excludes. Eli, the card jack thief guy, totally excludes him and insists that Luke had a gun. And Commander Kane, he pushes back, but some other of these, like, board member guys, I don't know, they are fully on Tavaroff's side. They think that he's a hero for what he did and he should be commended for his bravery. And Jacob insists in that moment that they need to uh, review the body cam footage and talk to all of the other people who were on the scene, which would be just Tavaroff and his partner. Didn't catch his name, but doesn't matter. We never see him. <laughs> um, in the hospital, though, Luke is flatlining. He's not doing good. Um, and then we see him in that iconic, like, limbo state, you know what I mean, where the lights, you know that they just set up, like, floodlights on the other side of those windows and just went, boom, no, no diffusion. (laughs) They just set them up, and you know that that's limbo when it's too bright in there, um, and you know he's in this, like, between, he's in the between life and death, uh, subconscious state, and he sees a man standing by the windows in Kate slash Bruce slash whoever's office it is now, um, at Wayne, and he says, Dad? And then, in Wayne Tower, in the land of the living, Mary and Ryan talk about Luke's state, he's currently in a coma, and he's coded twice, and they really do it's not looking good. They don't think he's going to make it. At the moment, they have almost nothing to go on. They talk about the situation. Mary explains that she was on the phone with him and he said, oh my god, I see the guy from the holding cell doing something, like jacking a car or whatever. Uh, I can handle it, is basically what he told to Mary on the phone. And that's what she tells Ryan. And Mary says, well, then when he wouldn't pick up, I figured that he couldn't handle it. So, you know, uh, called the police. And they actually, Ryan and Mary actually believe that it was this Eli guy that shot Luke. Uh, They think that maybe he was jacking the car and Luke came in, stopped him, and he shot him and ran away. So they need to find this Eli guy. And Mary also says that she's going to use the Desert Rose to help Luke and she's going to put herself in charge of saving his life, uh, which I think is great use of kind of like a it almost there's I love I listen Batwoman has done this twice now every single season they have these like callbacks to earlier in the season and I just absolutely love it and I know that sounds really stupid because it's something that should happen on like every show um but I mean you know not every show (laughs) Not every show does that. Uh, (laughs) But with Batwoman, I mean, last year, last season, they had the prisoners, like, come back, you know, like, uh, Magpie and and all of those uh, other prisoners showed up again, and and it was a fun kind of, like, uh, not nostalgia, but kind of, like, a fun moment to, like, have them come back and, and be like, oh, shit, we're dealing with you again. That's what this episode kind of felt like to me. It felt like that episode where with those old 
uh, beginning of the season, season one villains who then showed up during the later parts of season one, I love, I just, exactly, this is how it feels. Because they're bringing back, you know, the Desert Rose, which is from early season two. Then they're bringing back, I mean, this is something that we're going to talk about later, but they're bringing back Wolf Spider, who obviously was someone that we saw in the beginning stages of season two. And I just love that they do that. I love that they kind of, like, tie them all back together. Because some, I think some shows treat the beginning and second halves of their of their seasons, like, they very much take uh, the, like, 2A and 2B kind of uh, uh, to heart, and they don't really connect them in that way, but I, I just really appreciate that. I love it. It makes me think of, like, uh, in Brooklyn Nine-Nine when they'd bring in the Pontiac Bandit all the time. Like, I just, I love recurring villains, and I love recurring characters that kind of, like, pop in here or there, and Wolf Spider feels like that for me. He feels like a Leslie Willis kind of live wire situation, which is really fun. Um, with Alice, though, she is snooping through Enigma's office and specifically her files and finds that Roman has been collecting information on the entire Kane family, Jacob, Kate, and even Mary included. Ocean comes back to dispose of the body and also they confirm that Enigma is Riddler's daughter. Can't remember if we knew that or not. I feel like it was, I mean, she's his daughter in the, in the comics, right? So it... I, I, it's hard to keep track of, of what they reveal, <laughs> what I know from my, like, comic knowledge versus what they have revealed on the show, because obviously people can put two and two together, uh, based on what we know of these characters in other iterations, so I don't know, I don't, can't remember if that was, like, a reveal, obviously it was a reveal to both Alice and Ocean, because they had no idea, but Alice is still very mad at Ocean, and rightfully so, and she wonders about why Black Mask is so obsessed with the Kane family. Ocean says that he doesn't care why Black Mask is so obsessed with the Kane family. He only cares about Alice, but here's the confusing part. Caring about Alice entails caring about the things that she cares about, so like, you should care about Kate if you cared about Alice. <sighs> Whatever. He's just... I... I am so, <laughs> I have more to say about them later, but I am just so sick of Alice and Ocean. I'm over it. It's done. I'm over it. It's over. I'm sick of it. Period. <laughs> I want it to end. Because it's like, <sighs> we'll talk about it later. But he's just so possessive and weird and gross. Anyway, with Ryan, she takes the Batmobile out on a high-speed chase uh, she actually corners Elliot, and he, he tells Batwoman that the crows rolled up and shot Luke after he said that Luke was the one actually stealing the car. Uh, Eli confirms that the crows did not care enough to follow him, and he tells Ryan the name Tavaroff. Um, Ryan then punches Eli in the face and knocks him out, leaving him to be dealt with by GCPD. Go off, queen. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um... And honestly, I, I've said it before, and I will say it again, every time that Batwoman does one of these episodes, or or not necessarily episodes, because it's, it's so baked into the show at this point, the, these, the, obviously the um, very relevant uh, issue at hand. Um, it just feels so, it just belongs in the show, you know, like, it's so baked in that it's like, yes, thank you, like, it doesn't feel like, uh, uh, performative or, um, or, like, shoehorned in. I mean, I've, I've said this before, I've just, every time that they have an episode like this, I'm just so blown away by the way that they're able to truly incorporate meaningful stories without just seeming like they're including them because they have to. Like, it's baked into the foundation of the show. I mean, Ryan's entire story is kind of built around dismantling, um, you know, uh, unjust systems of policing, and then obviously it's going to impact Luke because of just, you know, uh, him being in the wrong place at the wrong time and, and all of that, you know? And so... I don't know, I, I've said it before, but I'm saying it again. It's just really cool to see the show be able to seamlessly incorporate 
issues that genuinely affect us in the real world without just, you know, making a fool of themselves. <laughs> just because, I mean, I listen, I've not watched Black Lightning. I, I'm only on season one. I'm getting through it, but I saw somewhere, and I feel like this is true. <laughs> I saw someone on Twitter talking about how apparently they had a storyline where they, like, went back in time and, like, saved Brianna Taylor and is like, oh, God, guys, let's not do that. <gasps> he looks so good! Guys, I might just leave this in. This is incredible. We just got the first look at Luke as Batwing. Pictures leaked a couple of weeks ago of him, uh, oh my god, of him in the finale, um, wearing the suit, but they just released the official, I'm oh, sorry, I'm just, this just happening as I'm recording this. I can't believe it. <laughs> He looks so good, and it's the suit with the helmet. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna put, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put the picture on the screen right now, but if you're watching, or if you're, if you're listening, uh, go to Batwoman's Twitter. They post, I'm sure you've already seen it. They posted this yesterday, but holy shit. I, I genuinely did not think that we would get Batwing until at least season three, so I am so Stoked about this. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he looks so good. <laughs> he looks so good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. 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 <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> so good oh my god he looks incredible I'm so excited for that and I mean obviously the reveal that Luke is going to become Batwing puts um this episode into kind of a different perspective it, pu it puts it into perspective in a different way and now I'm really excited because obviously I mean I didn't really want to talk about the leaked suit because that's just like shitty you know when things leak and you get like this really awful look because it's like taken from like 15 million feet away and it's like blurry as hell I didn't really want to talk about it because I mean I just wanted to wait until it was like official 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 and now that it is I'm really excited to kind of touch on that now in this episode that worked out so perfectly <laughs> Um, so yeah, anyway, she, Batwoman though, she leaves Eli to, you know, just on the ground to be dealt with. So at the hospital though, Luke is still not doing well. And in his dream, he calls for his dad, but Bruce shows up to stand between them. Bruce tells Luke that he's been shot and he tells Luke that he has a choice to make. And this is something that I actually was thinking, like, live while watching the episode. I was like, I wonder if this is confirmation that Bruce is dead, but actually Luke says that later in the episode he's like does this mean you're dead and he's like I don't know Luke this is your subconscious so it's it's not I don't know if it's full confirmation that Bruce is dead but I mean I think we all know that Bruce is probably pretty dead he is probably pretty dead um in Gotham though there's anti-crow protests happening due to Luke's shooting and also kind of on top of that the excessive force used with the snake bite cannibals um people are just not happy with the crows and rightfully so uh, Ryan comes back and relays to Mary what she found out from Eli, and and, <laughs> and she tries to get on the internet on Luke's computer, but she just can't figure it out. And Mary, uh, f you know, kind of figures it out for her. And they look up Tabaroff, and they find that he's been involved in many officer-involved shootings and excessive force cases. And Ryan goes after him to see how he does against someone who is bulletproof, while Mary continues to work on the Desert Rose formula. And I just, I love, I love that every time, every time Ryan gets the chance, she mentions that she's black and bulletproof because I just adore that. It's so good. It just, it makes me think of the power that uh, Luke Cage had when it came out originally, how he was just this like big black man who was bulletproof and, you know, couldn't be subject to, at the time, I can't remember who it was, but obviously the 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 never ending stream of police brutality in this country um but i just i love that ryan any chance she gets mentions that cuz it's just so powerful 
And I love that now Luke is also going to be bulletproof. That it, It's just so cool. Oh my god. Um, so Alice shows up at Wayne Tower and Mary has to go deal with her. Mary tries to scare her with a taser, but Alice is not phased. And she also, it seems like she gets cold feet when she, uh, when it seems like she might be asking Mary for her help. Mary says, and why am I supposed to care about her when Alice is, like, telling her all about Cersei and, like, the things that she's doing with Black Mask. And Alice kind of just, like, she looks conflicted and you could see, like, six different emotions, like, pass by her face in an instant. And then she says, you aren't, you know, you're not supposed to care about her. Goodbye. (laughs) And Mary pushes, she pushes though, she follows Alice and and she's like, look, what, why, so you just came here just to like say something and then go and Alice is like, look, Black Mask is going after the entire Kane family. He's the only person in Gotham that hates all of you more than I do. (laughs) And I wanted to warn you to watch your back. Steppy is what she says. Um, And it surprises Mary that this warning would come from Alice, especially after, you know, trying to kill her on multiple occasions. She says, oh, you just wanted to show up and and warn me out of the goodness of your empty chest cavity. And that's probably one of my favorite Mary lines literally ever. <laughs> and um, Mary confronts Alice about being in love uh, with Ocean. And she says that maybe if she'd seen love earlier in her life, she wouldn't be a monster. And Mary says that as much as she hates Alice, everyone deserves love. Which is just so... I j- Listen, Alice and Mary are genuinely one of my favorite dynamics on the show. Whenever they're in the same room together, it is just... You never know what's going to happen and it's so interesting. And I just... With this Alice redemption that I just need, I need it in my, I need, inject it into my veins. I need it. Um, <laughs> with this uh, on the horizon, hopefully, like, please, you know, fingers crossed. I can kind of see Mary maybe, you know, having that kind of soft spot for Alice and maybe kind of understanding her, especially maybe if Alice opened up to Mary about how Enigma and Sophia changed her in the ways that they did and how they, you know, hardened her and turned her into this, like, you know, uh, just kind of, like, brutal killing machine. I I wonder how Mary would react to that. I wonder if Mary would see Alice as more of a victim and less of a monster. You know, I I just wonder. And I I hope that we can see that, especially once Kate's back. I mean, in the promo for next week, we, you know, Kate is back. They obviously succeed somehow in getting her back. And so I just wonder how Kate coming back is going to change Alice both as a character and with her dynamics with the rest of the Bat team, Luke and Mary and I mean especially Mary because now the Kane family for the first time is going to be reunited for the first time in a long time is going to be a unite you know reunited all together and I wonder how that's going to change the relationships on the show and I hope for the better. You know, I, I I mean, I've said this before this season, like, I, you know, obviously it's hard to ask for Alice redemption so early in the series, especially when she's such a pivotal um, antagonist for at some points for Batwoman. But also, I mean, there is a comic storyline where she becomes Red Alice, this anti-hero, and I just hope that they don't... I mean, Bat, listen, Batwoman is not known for dragging things out. They get shit done, like, quick. They are not... <laughs> they don't play. They don't mess around. Um, but I, I just hope that they don't drag their feet on this as well. I mean, obviously, if they're already turning Luke into Batwing, you know, that's something, you know, I never saw for at least until season three. If we can end season two with kind of an uptick in Alice's... Um, development towards that anti-hero status, I would be so thrilled. Um, 
So in a shady alleyway, Batwoman jumps Tavaroff and proves that he's extremely trigger happy. He practically unloads his gun into Ryan's cape, but she's bulletproof, so it doesn't matter. Tavaroff tries to justify his actions by saying that Luke was just released from jail and that he broke the law, so he deserved it. Which, I mean, obviously is something that we've heard over and over again and is just as infuriating when coming from this guy who has an extremely punchable face and I just want to punch him. Um, so then his, his cronies, uh, pun intended, uh, pull up and run Batwoman over with their car before driving away with Tavaroff in tow, proving that, that his sector of the crows are extremely dangerous and also extremely militant in their, um, movements and, and in watching each other's back. It's pretty scary. Back at Alice's abandoned train car, she calls home. Alice is there packing up his stuff after he disposed of Enigma. Alice reminds Ocean that she betrayed him, killed him, and picked her sister over him, and he tells her that she's infuriating and unpredictable. But then he says that he can't help who he loves? Listen, this is where I go off about Alice and Ocean. (laughs) This is, like, such a perfect example of a heterosexual romance. Like, these people legitimately don't like each other. Like... Like, Alice and Ocean, they've done nothing but butt heads since they've reunited. I genuinely don't think Alice think finds anything likable about Ocean, and I don't think Ocean finds anything likable about Alice. All they do is push each other's buttons, but they say they love each other, and it's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> There's just such a disconnect, for me at least, between what Ocean says and what he says next like it's it's like he's saying two different things like he literally says you are unpredictable insufferable you're horrible i hate you but i love you i can't help it that i love you and (laughs) and alice says that she wants it all she wants ocean and she wants kate back and if he truly loved her he'd want her to have it all too which is absolutely true like that is i mean that's like bare minimum you know and Obviously, as most things happen on TV, this conversation is never, uh, you know, wrapped up or resolved in any way because he just kisses her and then we, you know, it's like fade to black. (sighs) Okay. At the hospital, Mary has the, the desert rose with her but isn't let into the room by two crows blocking the door, which was apparently ordered by Jacob. So it's back to the drawing board for Mary. At the back cave, though, Ryan is nursing her ribs and called Sophie, who joins her in watching the newly released body cam footage from Luke's shooting. In it, someone doctored the footage to include a gun in Luke's hand to justify the shooting. Sophie puts all the pieces together and, and, and realizes that Tavroff not only doctored this footage, but also planted a gun at the scene, uh, which was connected to an armed robbery that apparently happened like a week prior or something like that, something that was unsolved that they could pin on Luke the moment that he wakes up. Um, Ryan finds out from Mary about the agents at the hospital and then presses Sophie about how something like this could possibly happen. She says, she just wonders like how this murder of crows could possibly pull us all off and get away with it and how it couldn't be the first time. And Sophie tells Ryan that all body cam metadata is auto-deleted at 3 a.m. and they've got to get the original footage. Um, And then Ryan actually confronts Sophie about the corruption of the crows. And Sophie's like, look, I didn't know about all this stuff, but once I found out, I quit. And Ryan's like, look, you quit yesterday. You know, this, this is not an isolated incident. None of these are isolated incidents. How could you have turned a blind eye for so long? But it's, it becomes clear that even though Ryan does have valid reasons to question Sophie and question her complacency for those years that she worked at the Crows, it's also clear that Ryan is projecting, and she blames herself for Luke getting shot, saying that it was because she pushed him for being a bystander, and he took her words to heart and got shot for it. Um, then there's a Wildmore hug, guys. Guys, in the episode before Kate comes back, which is going to give me the lesbian love triangle that I deserve. I deserve it. (laughs) But it, that scene genuinely between uh, Ryan and Sophie was so heartbreaking. And when Ryan was like, I didn't shoot Luke, stop treating me like I did. 
it was just so devastating. And obviously, Javicia just, like, broke my heart with her acting. And I just, God, it was, it was so good. At the hospital and in his dream, Bruce tells Luke that basically bet he's be basically between life and death. Um, and he's got this choice to make. Choose between life or death. Um, he tells Luke that a machine is keeping him alive, that he was shot. And this is where Luke asks, if this is purgatory, does that mean you're dead? And Bruce tells Luke that he can't talk to his dad because he can only talk to him if he's dead. Decision made. So basically, Luke's choices are to go back to the land of the living or to get to go and hang out with his dad for all of eternity. So at the Crow's office, Sophie confronts Jacob. Sophie pushes Jacob to re-examine the case, especially after vowing last season to weed out corruption from the Crows after they found out the truth about Lucius Fox's murder. And she's like, look, we can't let people get away with two different Fox cases, you know, having corruption behind them. We can't let this happen again. And Sophie brings up this old, like, rape case that she had and where sh there was this rapist that they caught, but, but there was all circumstantial evidence and there was nothing that they could do to really put him away. But then all of a sudden, at the last minute, this airtight evidence just showed up and Sophie says, look, if, if it can appear there, it can appear here. And she says to Jacob to open your eyes before anyone else has to die. And it's so, it's so interesting because Jacob's like, look, you know, we took a rapist off the streets with that. He doesn't admit to, you know, doctoring any evidence, but obviously Sophie's implying it and he doesn't outright deny it. But obviously this is a different situation. I mean, come on. I don't know. It's just like she's she's trying so hard to push through to him but he's so bullheaded and and stubborn and annoying that he just can't see the sense in what sophie's saying but after sophie leaves uh jacob's office she r walks down to the like bullpen part of the crow's uh office and she plants something on the computer which then allows her to access their camera feed then they put their plan into motion because across town at the hospital, Wolf Spider swings through to Luke's window while Mary causes a distraction with the guards by bringing them coffee. Wolf Spider administers the desert rose to Luke and then he shows up at the hospital in the hallway with Mary. He also calls Luke a cutie pie. Love that. <laughs> and that's what I mean. That's what I was talking about, about um, bringing in these characters from the beginning of the season to really just like tie the two ends together bring everything together. I love that they made Wolf Spider an ally, because obviously he was someone that they were looking to take down, you know, in his original episode. But I just adore that they were like, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. <laughs> we could use his help. <laughs> um, so in his dream, though, Luke is fading because the land of the living is pulling him back because the desert rose is working. And Bruce tells him, you're about to survive, my friend. But Luke still potentially has a choice but not if he waits for much longer and then we're pulled away back to the crow's office where jacob confronts tavroff about his use of his, of excessive force uh pressing him about how luke could possibly go from an above board model citizen to gta bank robber overnight and about how killing the cannibals wasn't the only option considering they've got an entire armory that includes non-lethal non-lethal weapons and obviously, Tavrov has every excuse in the book of like, uh, you know, if we investigated every time a gun was fired, we'd never get anything done. And Jacob's like, look, I'm just saying that you don't have to kill people all the time, <laughs> you know? And basically, Jacob makes the... I was surprised. <laughs> Maybe I don't have any faith in Jacob Kane, but I was surprised that he made the, de the decision to suspend Tavrov, but he does not take that for an answer because he knocks Jacob out with the back of his gun. In the Crow's data bank, Ryan searches for Luke's original body cam footage, but apparently there's just so much footage under Tavrov's name that it's impossible to find Luke's recording in the short time they have because, of course, it's not sorted by date. But also, that... Uh, listen, I... <laughs> I know this is a show where a woman puts on a bad suit and runs around and saves the day, 
But didn't they say that they delete all the metadata at 3 a.m. like every night? Or is it like a weekly thing? Like, is it like, oh, here's the week's worth of metadata? Or is it like nightly? Because the shooting just happened? Like, wouldn't... You would think that there wouldn't be enough, like, time to have elapsed for that much body cam footage to show up? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to question it. While they're trying to do that, Sophie sees the commander being kidnapped on the security cams, so Ryan is left to choose between saving Jacob and getting the original footage to clear Luke's name. Tavroff has Jacob in a conference room with his murder and sees the snakebite tracks on Jacob's arms and pulls out three boxes to give to the commander. Um, Tavroff says that Jacob is going to turn them all in and that this is the only way And when the lights go out and Ryan takes out the entire murder of crows. <laughs> Tavroff is the only one left and Ryan says, lights. I wouldn't want, I wanted you to see this. And I think she was talking to Sophie. <laughs> I mean, who else is she talking to? I mean, does she want, I mean, she could be talking to Jacob, but I assume that Jacob's not the one that turned on the lights. Sophie had to be the one to turn on the lights, right? Right? I mean, so she was, was she showing off for Sophie? I love that. Anyway, <laughs> she takes him out and then t- unties the commander and confronts him about his lack of code and she says i burn it down or no she says um either burn it down or you're just as bad as them which go off um i also i loved this moment for ryan as a character the moment between choosing to clear luke's name or to save Jacob Kane, someone who she feels, I mean, and really he is responsible for letting the corruption slide at the Crows for so long, letting Ryan get convicted, letting Luke's father get killed, letting Luke get shot. Some guy who, you know, just has a, a laundry list of awful, awful things, you know, attached to his name. And she chooses to save him rather than to get the footage to clear Luke's name. And I think that was such an important character moment for Ryan, especially after, you know, couple a couple of episodes ago, Ryan letting Alice get taken by Cersei. I loved that they showed that she could put the, uh, she could put her own personal vendettas and personal, um, feelings aside in order to do the right thing, to save a man's life, no matter who that man is. I love that they, they showed that growth for Ryan, and I think that's really cool, um, because, I mean, like I said, I've been, I've been talking about it for the past couple of episodes about what makes a hero, and about how Ryan is a really interesting hero because she's not necessarily a conventional uh, Supergirl type of hero where she doesn't, she hadn't been keen on saving people who she really didn't think deserved to be saved. And maybe they didn't and maybe they did, but she was going to draw that line in the sand for herself. But I, I think it's really interesting that they were like, you know what? Now Ryan is going to be able to learn from her mistakes for these past couple of episodes and grow and change and decide that being a hero is not about picking and choosing who you want to save. It's about doing the right thing. And ultimately, later in this episode, we find out that Ryan doing the right thing, those actions were rewarded by what Jacob ends up doing later in the episode. I think that Jacob would not have done, he wouldn't have done what he did, had, he wouldn't have disbanded the crows had he not been saved by Batwoman in the way that he was, you know? Even if someone else had saved him, I don't think he would have disbanded the crows. I think it was Batwoman's, like, ability to connect to Jacob and to say, look, I'm holding up a mirror. These guys are you unless you change something. And I love that. I loved that they were, that they did, they took Ryan and they developed her in that moment. They had this huge character moment for her and then they rewarded her by having Jacob be inspired to disband the crows. I just, that was such a good writing moment. It was such a cool moment from the Batwoman writers. It was just so cool. Um, so I just, I love that. At the hospital, uh, Ryan and Mary visit Luke, who's still unconscious in his bed. 
At the Crow's headquarters, Jacob sets the record straight to the media about exactly what happened, including how they planted the gun and doctored the footage. He even credits Batwoman for saving his life, which was a surprise to me, even though he's done it before, but just still, Jacob Kane saying Batwoman was good at anything is definitely a, a shock to me. <laughs> um, he says that he started the Crows to protect Gotham from monsters like the man who killed his family, and he apologizes to the Fox family, and he announces that he's disbanding the Crows. Did not have that on my Batwoman bingo card. I had, like, literally everything else. I... <laughs> My currently my Batwoman bingo card, I'm like one away from bingo. Like <laughs> I had Sophie Quits the Crows on there. I had Kate coming back on there. I had um Luke Batwing on there. <laughs> um <laughs> I had so many things on my Batwoman bingo card, but Jacob disbanding the crows was not on my Batwoman bingo card. I had I had Jacob getting murdered on my Batwoman bingo card. <laughs> but that was just I mean, like I said, it was just such a wonderful moment, not only for Jacob as a character as well. I mean, the crows, I think he sees as something that he, that di divided him from his daughter. Obviously, he knows now that Kate was Batwoman, so he sees the ramifications of how that changed his relationship with his daughter, and especially in the context of, holy shit, that was Kate. And I'm sure that bringing that Tavaroff when he brought up, oh my god, you know, you've never been shy of excessive force. What about the time you lit up Batwoman at the stadium? I'm sure that that really hit a nerve and he was like, you know what? No, I, I don't want to be known for the time that I shot at my daughter, you know, ruthlessly. I need to do something about this. This needs to be fixed. And so, again, I just, I love that. Love that. And I mean, as much as I just don't like Jacob Kane, <laughs> I just don't like the guy. I think it was a really cool character moment. It's such a wonderful development for him as a character and as a person. At the hospital, Ryan tells an unconscious Luke that they did it. They took down the crows. And Mary says that the team needs Luke. She needs Luke. Um, and that's, is Hamill Fox back on track? I will never know. <laughs> I hope so. My God, I want them back. <laughs> In his dream, Bruce tells Luke that it's not fair, that he has done so much good in his life, but he still got shot, and a whole mess of people out there will be willing to believe that he deserved it just because he's black. Luke then asks what the point is if, despite all the good they put into the world, horrible things continue to happen, and he says that he understands why Bruce hung up his cape, why he left, because it's just too damn depressing to continue on. And Luke actually makes his choice, finally. He says, and I don't want to live in that world anymore. I want to be with my dad. And then Luke tries to walk to his dad to make the choice to end his life. And he wakes up and the choice was ultimately taken from him. But honestly, I think out of all of the moments on Batwoman that have like hit me the hardest. I think that that one is genuinely one of them. And I mean, not to be like cheesy or whatever, but I actually am kind of like tearing up right now, but because it's just so upsetting to have a character like Luke be so hopeless and so just like sucked dry of any semblance of want to live. Like, it's just... I, I I was genuinely so shocked that that he decided to die to you know not continue living to just go with his dad I I was just so shocked and I I think that that's gonna be something a choice for his character that sticks with me for a really long time and and a moment in television that sticks with me for a really long time how the world just beat Luke down to the point where he didn't want to get back up anymore. And it's just so sad. And I think especially when now taking into consideration how he's going to be going forward as a hero in this like crazy armored bat suit, 
I'm really excited to see how he gets there. <laughs> I mean, I don't see Tavarov going away anytime soon. I mean, I know that they realistically, they arrested him, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if he were to show up again with some kind of militia as some kind of villain. Um, I mean, not that he wasn't a villain before, obviously he clearly was, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if he got out of prison and, and had like a rogue militia, uh, it's, you know, and, and maybe Luke has to take him down. I don't know, but I just, hearing Luke say that was just so upsetting. And I, as, as just somebody who really, really freaking loves Luke, I was just like, oh my God. And it's just so sad because obviously Ryan and Mary were there to like greet him with smiles and his mom was coming up and, and like he was about to give that all up because he just couldn't take it. I don't know. It's just so, so, so sad. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited though to see how this informs his transformation into Batwing. I mean... Obviously, I think it's going to be a similar vibe to how Ryan feels making this black man bulletproof is going to be something very important to his character. And, I mean, I'm sure that he his life's mission is now going to be that nothing like that ever happens to anyone ever again. And to kind of follow in Bruce's footsteps, maybe. And and I'm, I'm really excited to see how this goes and, and what path Luke goes down. And I, I'm really excited, especially to see Ryan and Luke out in the field together. I, I, I I'm kind of curious if maybe like, is he going to keep it a secret from Ryan? And then like, oh my God, he's got a secret identity. Or is it going to be like, he's going to take, uh, you know, Ryan and Mary's opinions into consideration and really like work with them to get, um, to get his his mission started and to to become not necessarily a sidekick but an active member of team bat in the field i'm just really excited to see where it goes um so as jacob packs up his office mary texts him that she's proud of him and it just i mean like i said it's such a wonderful character moment for him obviously Mary's words really stuck with him from after the snake bite incident and I I just I'm interested to see what he does next especially because I mean he's out of job Sophie's out of a job what are these people gonna do <laughs> what are they gonna do I just I don't know but Sophie shows up at the office and tells him that he did the right thing and she says doesn't matter how we get there sir what matters is that we do and that's true it's so true in Jacob's car, surprise, it's Alice. Uh, she says she needs his help. She says, I know what you're thinking. Me? Help you? I've made it my paternal legacy to disappoint you at every opportunity. <laughs> Even when she's trying to get Jacob's help, she still is going to roast him, and I love that. Uh, she tells him, though, that Kate's alive. She tells him that Kate's in Gotham being held by Black Mask, and she says they're going to do the one thing him and Kate never did for her which is stop at nothing to get her back. And that is it. That is the end of Batwoman 215. I mean, like I said, this episode was great. It was heartbreaking and and just, I mean, such a great episode. I mean, obviously not... When I say a great episode for Luke as a character, it obviously included a lot of development for Luke as a character. Obviously, what he went through was not great, but... Um, I, I mean, like I said, I'm just so intrigued to see how he develops into Batwing when that starts. I mean, God, maybe, I mean, in the pro, in the promo for next week, there's not any kind of spoiler, in the promo for next week, Kate's coming back. She is, I mean, first of all, she's not crispy anymore. Wonder how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> but she she comes back she's ryan says are you kate kane and she says let me get back to you on that um and we finally get to see wallace day's kate kane on screen actually just about a year after they announced that they would not be recasting kate kane that's so crazy um but um 
I'm just so intrigued to see how Luke goes from, you know, point A to point B, wanting to die and then choosing to live and be a hero, you know? And I, I'm just really excited to see exactly how that goes down. And I wonder, too, if if Kate's Kate might give him his blessing. Kate might give him her blessing. I just, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just so excited. I mean, God, Batwoman is just so good. It's just so good. Guys, it's so good. And I know you know because you're all, you. if you've made it to the end of this podcast, then you know that it's good. But <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, that's all I've got for, for this week. Um, there's only a couple more episodes of Batwoman left. There's 18 episodes total in this season. So there's three left. I'm really excited to see what happens. I can't wait. And then obviously coming back next, uh, next season with season three, um, it's going to be so good. Oh my God. (laughs) I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh my God. Anyway, that's all I have. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, let me know. You could tweet me at televised pod. Uh, you could leave me a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Um, let me know your theories about Batwing. Let me know your reactions to the Batwing suit. Obviously, that was kind of crazy. Just, like, you know, happened while I was doing this. But, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know what you think. You can rate, like, share, subscribe. Do all the things. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.